Jesse Skulls from VH1's Rock of Love. And this is Talk of Love, the new podcast. This isn't just reality, this is real life. Hey everybody, it's Lacey motherfucking Skulls and this is Talk of Love, episode 24. How are you guys? How's everybody doing? You know, I've been doing pretty good. I actually just recently started working out again, so I'm a little bit sore. I'm like walking around kind of like, stiff and decrepit right now. I haven't worked out in about a year and a half, which is a really, really, really long time for me. Um, And one of my Talk of Love contributors who has been doing Skype chats with me about once a month, which you guys need to sign up to be contributors so you can do Skype chats with me too. But Alana, I got to give her a shout out because she has really inspired me because she's all about fitness and health and nutrition and all that good stuff. So she has inspired me to like get back into the gym. And the reason I haven't been to the gym in so long, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, I haven't mentioned this on the podcast before, but about a year ago, a little more than that, actually, my husband and I got in a head-on collision. It was really crazy. I really haven't been in any serious car accidents in my whole entire life. I mean, I've had like a couple of little fender benders here and there, but that's about it. But um, But yeah, we were in a head-on collision. We were actually with our dogs. That was the worst part. We had a big SUV and we were living in Los Angeles. We were taking the dogs to the beach and we were going to Malibu specifically. And going from the highway in Los Angeles to Malibu, you have to go through these canyon roads. And so there's all these mountains and then you have basically one lane for each direction. So when you're driving, you're going around these blind curves And there's really not much of a shoulder, if any, like you basically have like the mountain on one side and you have the guardrail and just like the, you know, like nothing to the right because it's the side of a mountain. So we were, we were driving and my husband was driving. I was in the passenger seat and uh, we were coming around the, the left-hand curve. And as I said, it was a totally blind curve. And as we were coming around the mountainside, all of a sudden there was a car in our lane coming straight at us. And by the time that we saw the car to the time of impact, it was probably about two seconds or maybe less than that. And um, as I said, my husband was driving and that was the scariest thing I have ever been through in my entire lifetime. It was, I mean, just seeing a car coming straight at you was freaking terrifying. I remember I screamed really loud. I don't know if I thought we were gonna die. I don't know if, I don't, I just didn't know what was gonna happen. It was terrifying. So fortunately, we were only going probably about 35 or 40 miles per hour. And the car that hit us, they were also only going about 35, 40 miles per hour. But it was a pretty um, pretty violent impact. And what sucks is if you think about how your seat belted in, I was in the passenger seat and I wasn't expecting this, obviously. So I remember I was holding a drink with one with my left hand and the seat belt, you know, it it holds, if you're in the passenger seat, it holds your right shoulder back but nothing holds your left shoulder back. So on impact, it was like a dead on nose to nose impact. So I remember my right shoulder stayed back and my left shoulder kind of, you know, violently went forward and I ended up twisting really hard. And the airbag basically punched my left hand that was holding a drink. And I remember it like really banged up my hand and my knuckles and my fingers were all jammed. And I ended up getting um, multiple herniated discs in my neck and my whole left like side of my back, like my shoulder blade and all that was all jacked up. My poor husband, same thing. He got hurt multiple herniated discs. And, um, but fortunately we were able to walk away from the accident, which was amazing and miraculous. So I was really grateful for that. And the guy that hit us, um, he was just a young kid. He just overshot the turn. Um, we felt really, really bad for him. Actually, he was so like sorry and upset that this had happened and he had good insurance. It took care of everything. And, um, but he was okay too, thankfully, but it was crazy because we have, you know, three great Danes plus a little guy, they're all in the back of the SUV. And so when the impact happened, I mean, first of all, it was, it was shocking and and frightening, but it was also really loud. Like it sounded like, um, a gunshot had gone off. And I remember immediately after impact, you know, you're in shock and you're stunned and you're like, is everybody okay? And then the whole cabin of the inside of the car filled up with, um, I guess was powder from the airbags going off. And, um, and then I just immediately heard this like, like in my right ear, it was really loud and it was crazy. And then our car automatically calls 
911. So my my husband said he was okay. He was like, let me call, let me get 911 here, get the you know ambulance or whatever. So I'm like, so the driver of the car comes over and he opens my door and he was like panicking, like, oh my God, are you guys okay? He was actually a really sweet kid. And so I'm like, I gotta, like, are my dogs okay? And that was like my my next thought, like, oh, holy shit, my dogs, you know, it was a really violent impact. So I get out, I open up the back. Thankfully, my dogs were okay. I got all of them out of the car because the car was filled up with this powder from the airbags. And um, so I'm standing now in the middle of the road with three Great Danes and a little dog and we're totally shaken up. There's, there's really like no room on the road because behind us was the guardrail in just like a cliffside. And, um, and so I'm standing in the middle of the road and I'm realizing that on either side of the accident, cars that are coming that are not expecting all these stopped cars are slamming on the brakes. So my next thought is like, oh my God, there's going to be another accident. And I'm literally standing in the middle of the road with all of my dogs. And I was trying to figure out like where to take the dogs to safety. And there just was nowhere to take them. We were just like in the worst spot possible to have a really bad car accident. So within maybe like 60 seconds of me trying to figure this out, I just hear this woman. And this is really crazy. I got to say of all the times I've had good luck, it's always been in bad situations. That's when my good luck shows up. And I'm really, I don't know why that is a thing for me, but I'm lucky and grateful that it is um, by the grace of God or Satan or whoever it is that's looking out for me. I don't care who, but for the grace of whoever's looking out for me, um, I've had really like a helping hand in these kinds of situations. This woman was like, oh, very calmly, she just appeared out of seemingly nowhere. And she was like, she's like, hey, um, can I give you and your dogs a ride home? And I was like, yes. But then I was like, you know, the dogs are probably not going to fit in any, I mean, three giant Great Danes, you know? So uh, she points to where her car was and she has a giant SUV. I'm like, perfect. So I told my husband, I'm going to take the dogs home. I'm going to go get the other car and then come back and, and come get you. And he's like, that's fine. So we put the dogs in the back of her car, uh, in her SUV. I jump in the back seat and there's this little old lady that's probably like 90 years old in the front passenger seat of that SUV. And so she just turns around, she smiles and she was very calm and sweet, like good energy. And she just looks at me and she goes, what happened? Did two cars try to be in the same spot at the same time? (laughs) And I was like, yes, that's exactly what happened. And she was just so sweet. And I just remember like her energy was very calming. And so the woman gets in the car too. And I only lived about 15 minutes away. So they drive me back and she was just like, just such a sweet woman. And I was in shock and I was just like, thank you so much. I was freaking out having the dogs in the middle of the road and you came and like saved us. I'm like, thank you so much. And she said, hey, listen, she goes about two years ago, I was in a rollover accident with my dog in the car and uh, and some stranger came along. Oh, it's gonna make me emotional. It was so sweet. She said a stranger came along and got her and, and her dog and basically rescued them from that really horrible uh, situation. And she's like, ever since then, I just got to like pay it forward. So I was like, oh, you melt my heart. So she took us back to the house. The dogs were miraculously okay. And then I got my car, went and picked up my husband and, and um, you know, we got everything taken care of. So it was a crazy, crazy wild situation. But because we were both pretty injured and we both needed um, like injections in our vertebrae and all kinds of stuff and insurance companies take forever to get that paid for, we just fell out of the um, habit of working out. So this is where this all started. So um, Alana, thank you so much for motivating me and encouraging me to get back to the gym. This is day two. When I go to the gym, I personally am all about like the weights and the machines and, and getting strong and getting toned and getting muscles. So um, so I, that's what I'm doing now. So I'm all like sore and achy, you know. Maybe I should put out a workout video. Would you guys like to see me do like a workout video? It would be like <laughs> the Rock of Love workout it would probably be pretty ridiculous. I'd be like, and this move is called feeling stabby and one and two and one and two. I don't even know what muscle that exercises, but I'm sure there is one. I'm just kidding. Don't do, don't do this when you're stabby. We only, we only stab with hugs around here. Okay. You stab with hugs. That's, that's, that's our, that's our philosophy around here at uh, Talk of Love. (laughs) Anyway, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for um, continuing to stick with me with this podcast. Every week that goes by, I'm super excited for my guests. I've had amazing people come on already. I'm continuing to get amazing people, which makes me very happy. And um, a lot of it is thanks to you guys too, your suggestions and tagging me in in other um, of Love cast members, Instagrams and stuff like that. You guys have been super helpful. So thank you guys for that. 
So without further ado, let me introduce my next guest. I'm super, super excited for her from Flavor of Love and Charm School with Monique. Please welcome Courtney, as you guys may know her, Goldie. Hey, girl, what's up? How are you? Hey, what's good, girl? What's you look going on? fantastic, I got to say. You look like you just stepped off the set of Flavor of Love, and it's like a day later. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's really, right? Girl. It's funny. <laughs> Here's the looking young. It's funny because... You know I love dance. Say that again? I said, you know I love the dance. Oh, yeah. It's Goldie and Lacey. It's Goldie and Lacey. <laughs> it's Goldie and Lacey. <laughs> we're just not in the hot tub. We, I was just saying, we just need a hot tub and we'll be good to go. <laughs> I love it. This interview is already <laughs> off to a great start. <laughs> so, I got to say, um, all, a lot of the girls that I have been, well, and guys that I've been interviewing from all these shows, I feel like everybody is aging phenomenally. Like it's insane to me to think that it's been 12, 13 years Everybody looks great, but I feel like time is like flown by. Is it weird to you that it's been 12 years since these shows? Well, it's, for my show, it's been 14. Because oh, we, we actually, it premiered January of 06. And we shot it in October of 05. So, girl, yes, wow. I just thank God. I feel like I'm aging backwards, boo boo. That's yes. crazy. That's crazy. And you just had a birthday, right? Yes. Uh huh. May 23rd. Oh, happy birthday. I'm one of them. I'm like full throttle, you know what I'm saying? A May baby. Like uh -huh. extra, I'm a, I always tell people I say I'm a I'm an extroverted introvert. Ah, I like that. I think I can relate to that. Yeah, I'm a yeah. June baby. I'm a June baby. I just had my 44th birthday. So Girl, you look good. Oh, you thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, thank you. I always say it's because I drink the blood of the non-believers. <laughs> it's actually not nearly that exciting. I wish it was that exciting. Right, right. no, 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 no. I just drink water. I just drink water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you too, actually. I always tell people lots of lots of water, lots of moisturizer, and lots of sleep. And then you look That's beautiful it. forever. Yeah, yeah, you know, Wendy Williams is big on that too. She's like, moisturize, moisturize, mm -hmm. moisturize. I'm yes. like, yeah, I feel it though. You got to when you like, when you get like over like 35, you got to be on it. Which yeah, 100%. And I always say you don't even have to buy the expensive stuff like the cheap grocery store stuff is like totally fine i just like I, slather it all over me you my type of girl that's what i'm saying girl i be on the ponds the the super yes. deep pond. yep yeah oh, ponds gives me life and like i think i use like some thing i have something as a moisturizer like we keep it we keep it under ten dollars yeah yeah yep, yep. <laughs> i'm right there with you i'm right there with you well good <laughs> deal well i am so excited to have you on the show because i gotta say I was such a big fan of all of these shows, Flavor of Love and Surreal Life and I Love New York and I watched all of them and you always stood out to me and it's funny because when I announced that you were going to be on the podcast, a lot of the VH1 fans said the same thing that I'm about to say, which is you stand out because you just were so smiley and so positive and you had such good energy and good vibes and it didn't even matter if there was like craziness going on in your house. It was like, yeah. if all the girls were losing their damn minds, you were just like yeah. keeping it positive. And I really respect you for that. Cause I know how taxing it is to be in that house for such an extended period of time. And you didn't lose your shit, which is impressive. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, I mean, every, every moment was it, you know, that, I mean, there was, there was times here and there. You know what I mean? Where it was like, what? You said what? You coming for me who? Like, sometimes you got to check people just to let them know. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But for the most part, I like to keep stuff positive. Because, you know what, Lacey? I'm like, look, girl. I grew up on a farm in Carolina. See, I have ever been in a mansion like that. And I was like, what? <laughs> we here for free? Like, for free? Okay. Girl, that was like the best Airbnb of my life. So I was going to make the most of it. I was going to have a great time. It was, yeah, that was, that was my thinking. I love it. I love it. That's such a great, a great attitude. So I do remember that you were, and Flav talking about how you grew up on a farm. And so did you grow up in the Carolinas? I did. I, I grew up in a small town called Rayford, which is right outside of Fayetteville, Fort Bragg. A lot of people know Fort Bragg. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Yes, honey. And look, and as a kid, like my dream was to live like in a neighborhood, like in a city, <laughs> like in a suburb, like anything where there were <laughs> other houses. Please, God, give it to me now. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, because we had like no neighbors, like zero, like wow. there weren't even, there weren't even adjacent farms. It was like our farm and tree. It was just like, I got to get out of here. Wow, that's crazy. So did you go to, did you, were you homeschooled or did you go to public school? Oh, girl, no. I, I'm so glad I won't homeschool because, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think my parents could have did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like kids now. Like, it's like the kids now getting homeschooled because of COVID. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. It's so bad for them because it's like, mm -mm. The but no, 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 definitely public school all the way, girl. I had to get out of there and just, you know what I'm saying? Like to socialize because I love to socialize and I always been like that. So, yeah, yeah. totally. I totally get that. It's, it's got to be hard to be and like, Somebody with such a big personality like you, and you're hanging out with like the animals, like so. <laughs> so. That's why I say I'm an extroverted introvert because, like, I love being out with people, you know, just having a good time. But then at the same time, I recharge by myself. Mm -hmm. I get that. I totally get yeah. that. I feel like I I'm similar in that regard. Like, I need I like to be out, but I I get like mentally tired, and so I need to like take little breaks, and then I can kind of keep it going again. But um, so when did you, so let me ask you this. What was your first official job? Oh, I worked at um, McDonald's. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. You would See? like, I would totally go to that McDonald's every single day just to come like buy chocolate shakes from you and hang out with you. <laughs> Uh, I hated that job. I hated McDonald's. I mean, not, 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 I don't hate McDonald's, but I hated that job because it was like, it was super extra high and it was, it was like grease all over the floor. And I was like, hiding around. I got fired. Girl, I got fired for giving away food. <laughs> I love that. The like, 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 I, I straight got got because the lady was like, um, where was that order that you just rang up? I was like, what order? Uh, uh, <laughs> You're like, it's in my buddy's stomach. I'm a, I'm a horrible liar. And clip, do you see that I gave away the food? I don't know where the order is. Take me to jail. Just take me now. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. So how did you, how old were you? when you first realized that you wanted to get into entertainment? Oh my God, Pro girl, probably, um, I was a kid maybe, like a kid, teenager around there somewhere. Like I always, I just love, I love movies. Mm -hmm. I always love TV shows. Like growing up, my favorite show was Martin. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and it, it just, it, I don't know. I just thought like, oh my God, I need to be in that world. Um, cause I was always like, I was that kid, like always performing or dancing or something in front of my mirror. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. So that was, I mean, that was always me. And I don't know. I just knew I like just some kind of way I knew that I would eventually end up going to Hollywood and doing it. Yeah. Well, you certainly did it and you did it like the biggest and the most awesome and amazing that you can. I really feel that people who were born to do that. I feel like it is one of those things where you know when you're a child. Because I felt like I was the same way. I was always like putting on little like one woman shows for my family. And I was just always like the class clown and the one that was always, you know, wanting mm -hmm. to like make people laugh and entertain people. So I totally feel you on that. It's like something that you know from a young age. And I grew up in Texas, so very far away from Hollywood. But somehow if you have that drive, you just figure it out and you just find your way there. Yeah, what part of Texas? I'm from Dallas. Oh, yeah. girl, yes, I want to move there. I oh yeah, move there. Dallas yeah. is a good city. Let me know if you end up there. I'll come. I'll come show you around. It's good people there, but oh. um, and not nearly as miserable heat wise as Houston is. Houston is like insane. You'll just like sweat to death, and you'll just be a puddle of water on the ground. <laughs> oh, everybody here is hate. Like they do not want me to leave. Yeah. Like, oh, it's too hot. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna like it, girl. No, uh, you might as well stay here. I'm like, uh, <laughs> it's going on around here. I got to go. Uh, well, but yet, I was gonna say that, um, like when I was a kid, I remember as early as like six. Like I, uh, I went to school one day. You remember like show and tell oh, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so I went to school one day and I was going to be a clumsy ballerina. <laughs> That's and awesome. I 
this long skirt on and my whole thing was to perform for my class and I was like a ballerina who couldn't get her balance. So like I kept falling, jumping and like tripping and all that. And so it's funny because all these years later, I just wrote a, I just finished a children's book oh. called the Ballerina based on like that. That's so. amazing. I love that. I think that's so cool and like fun and funny. And I got to say, so I never was really big into comedy, like the stand-up comedy world, but my husband loves that. So he got me into the whole stand-up comedy world from a fan perspective. And so I have all the different comedians that I personally like, and he's introduced me to a lot of them. But one thing that I've come to realize is that comedians, for the most part, almost always are really, really intelligent, which is interesting. I think there's something to be said for having that kind of like quick wit and that sense of humor. Mm -hmm. It takes an intelligent person. But I also realize that a lot of them are um, have like... A, a dark past or battle with depression or, and, and I always thought that was weird and kind of ironic, you know, that all these people who are like so great at making everybody else laugh tend to be like depressed or have had hard times in their past, but are also, as I said, very highly intelligent. So would you say any of that describes your childhood or were you a pretty like happy go lucky kid all along? Lacey, you are on it today, girl. <laughs> what is it? Um yeah, yeah. I, I would definitely say that for myself and a lot of other comedians, I know it applies. You know, because I grew up, um, my mom passed when I was 15. And, I'm you sorry, know, can you say that one more dad, time? Sorry, I just, my, my, my mother passed when I was 14. She passed when you were 14? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's very traumatic. I'm so sorry yeah. to hear that. And, 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 you know, my dad was, he was like one of those old school fathers that, you know, was more so on, like, tough love mm, and, you know, I'm going to put you down to build you up. So uh -huh. he was, you know, yeah. And so he was kind of hard. He was like a hard person to kind of grow up under. And it just, you know, I guess that kind of fueled me wanting to get out and, and you know, where things were just exciting. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, and, and, and I would say, like, you know, in my adult life, um, I have had battles with depression. Um, and so, you know, just just I think comedy has always been a great way of releasing that. Yeah. You know, it's like I might be feeling crappy, but if I can make you laugh, yeah. then that kind of makes me feel better. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, I think I think that's kind of like a, a, a theme among comedians um, that I that I know. You know, so um, and then and then I became a therapist um, like in the last couple of years just so I can help other people get through their stuff and that's, process their stuff. That's so <laughs> cool. I, I think that's awesome. And that's really commendable. And I feel like that a, a lot of people deal with that. We're like, well, if I can't fix myself, I'll at least like if I can't fix my own problems, I can try to fix other people's problems. And it, it does make you feel a little bit better. And I, I got to say, I'm so sorry to hear about your mom, when I was 27 years old, uh, I lost my mom to suicide and that okay. was really rough. And she and I were like really, really super close. I've talked about it quite a bit on the podcast. So everybody listening probably already knows about this, but I just got to say it was really tough to deal with as a 27 year old. I cannot even imagine dealing with that as a 14 year old. And it sounds like the way you describe your dad, you kind of had to just sort of like suck it up a little bit. And I do feel like when with that kind of stuff, it does come out in whatever art form that you are, whether it's performance art or creative art. I feel like that usually it comes out that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cause, you know, um, I remember like I used to love Comic View. When I was a teenager and I would go to I would go to high school and retail jokes that I heard on. Comic View. Yeah, you know. And because I'm like, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking I'm the only one that's watching Comic View. So let me share all of this material with my friends at school. And like a lot of them will be like, oh, my God, you're so crazy. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I got that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I, I've, I've, been a com I've been a fan of comedy forever. Who are and some I mean, of your I favorite? Who are some of your favorite comedians? Oh, 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 good. I'm glad you asked me that. Yeah. Um, love Martin Lawrence, love yeah. Chris Rock, love Lou Nail, um, love B Flat, love um 
uh, Eddie Murphy. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Like Eddie Murphy, old school comedian, Red Fox. Um, I love uh, uh, Richard Pryor. I mean, just it just because like with comedy, it's kind of like what what do you feel like today? Like what what vibe are you feeling today? Yes, it's somebody for you know it's somebody for every vibe. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I, I just I'm I'm just I'm a, I'm a fan of it. yeah. You know who I love? Who, who's the black guy that has like the kind of longest hair? Like cat. Uh, yeah. what's that? Cat Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's really funny. There's, I, there's so many great ones too. And you and know, Kevin, girl, let me tell you, I was, the, um, I was at Factory one night, like, and I'm just kind of standing. You know, me, I'm like, it's, it's, you know, it's all these major comedians here, so I'm just kind of chilling in the back, <laughs> you know. And Kevin Hart walked past me, Ooh. and he was like, yeah, and he was like, "What's up, funny lady?" Whoa, <laughs> that's huge! Oh my God, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> that's Girl, amazing but it, I'm like so I'm funny I, I'm funny yeah. I, I'm funny <laughs> <laughs> well you know what's especially great about that is the, I remember it's gotten better I feel like in the past like five to eight, year, five to eight years but prior to that I know that like there was this thing going around that like women can't be funny and they were like there was people were really dogging on female comedians or saying that women just like were not as good as the male comedians or there just weren't as many. And I feel like over the past five years, that's gotten a lot better. And a lot of female comedians have really proven themselves, but it was kind of a boys club for a while. Did you, did you deal with that as well? Was that your perspective? Oh yeah. I think that was a lot, a lot of the perception. You know, when you say you're, when you say you're a comedian, they're like, and especially if you're cute, they're like, oh, you can't, you cute. <laughs> Yeah. You gotta be ugly to be fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Whitney Cummings kind of blasted that because Whitney Cummings, I really like her and she mm. has her own unique brand of comedy, but she's a really beautiful woman and she's really funny. So, um, yeah. So many beautiful female com- comedians. I mean, you got Tiffany Haddish. Yes. Um, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, there's, a, there's a lot of beautiful women that are doing their thing out here. The whole, um, it was, I don't know if you've seen it, it was the Bad Girls of Comedy, Snoop Dogg. Uh, did oh yeah yeah I heard about it but I haven't seen it yet. Girl, it's hilarious and every to me like every woman on that stage was gorgeous. So and get out of here. Yeah, totally. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. So um, I took a couple little notes here and I have uh, a lot of questions from fans on Instagram that are just like so excited you're gonna be on the podcast and have questions <laughs> for you. But before I get into the fan questions, I want to um ask you, I, I read online that you graduated recently from Fayetteville State University in North Carolina with a master's in social work. Girl! Girl, girl yeah. Hey, that and is look, awesome. And at school, when we get together, we be like, Bronco, right? Yeah. <laughs> girl, that's so yeah. awesome. That I'm like, that's, that is incredible. That's so cool. So tell us about that whole journey. What got you into the social work and it was ba- it was basically this is what you were talking about a little bit earlier that you just wanted really to help people and make them feel better yeah yeah, yeah. like okay so I was in New York I had moved from LA to New York um because my dad was sick mm-hmm. and so I wanted to be a little close I didn't want to come home but I wanted <laughs> to be closer to home yeah um, and he got really really sick and he needed like help and so I moved home to help him and that was kind of his thing he was just like, you know, you need to go back and go back to school and you need to get one of those social work jobs. And this, uh. and I mean, you know, when I was younger, he had been saying that for years. And when I was younger, it was like, uh, no, I'm not doing that. Uh, but as I got, you know, as I got older and I was home, it was, <laughs> well, I kind of do like talking to people. Yeah. And it kind of vibe with my personality. So, um, yeah, you know, I went to, um, I went back to school because the first, the, my, my, my first degree I got from UN Chapel Hill, Tar Heels. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> but I never did nothing with that degree, girl. I never did nothing with it. <laughs> but it's good because it keeps you well-rounded, you know? You know, sometimes you just want to learn some stuff. Right. I mean, I'm with you. Learn some stuff. So, um, and then I, and then I just decided to go back. I was in Fayetteville. So it just made sense. Federal State. And uh, I, you know, started going back, and I actually loved it. It oh. was, you know, it was cool. It was really cool. Um, and so got my got my bachelor's in social work. Then I got my master's, and now I'm fully licensed. 
Um, and 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 my the favorite my favorite part of the job is working with kids because kids are so honest. Yes, like, <laughs> yes. Though they cool, I love kids. Like kids are super cool and they super honest. <laughs> so it's just it's always like fun for me to you know what I mean. Just kind of help people in that way because I mean I am forty and I do have like a life you know my lifetime of experiences to give back. And so, you know, there and, and every once in a while, it's funny because the the adults that come to my office usually don't recognize me. Yeah. It's it's the kids. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you know, flavor of love like comes on, like it'll pop back on, they do a marathon mm-hmm. on for uh, Valentine's Day. Yep. And so um like sometimes, you know, the kids will be like, Miss Courtney, <laughs> you do that lady on TV. <laughs> I saw you on TV. Courtney, what was you doing on TV? And I'm like, uh, that won't me. I don't know who you thought you saw. <laughs> You're like, who? Who? I, I, I don't know. Courtney, who? <laughs> what? No, Courtney, I don't know. I don't know that. Please go sit down. Please. <laughs> hey, They're like, I'm where's my- Flav? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. I know it's 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 crazy to me how many times. I get young people who are like, I remember when Rock of Love first came out and I was getting people who were like 12, 13, 14 year old kids that are like, I saw you on Rock of Love. I'm like, girl, what were you doing watching that show? Your mother should like not let you watch that. <laughs> it's all bad for little kids. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, they watched saw- it. The Little yeah, Rebels. The- were you glad? Like, were you were you glad that you did the show? Oh yeah. I had a great, great time doing the show, but I sort of, you know, I just interviewed uh, Shatar, aka Hottie, a couple weeks ago, and some of the Rock of Love girls are kind of of the same mindset of me and of like what Shatar was saying, which is we were all sort of coming at this from like an entertainment perspective because I've always been in entertainment. When I was in school, I studied theater, and then in my, all throughout my twenties and thirties, I was in rock bands touring around the country. So when I got asked to do Rock of Love, I was like, okay, we're we're here to make a fun TV show, but several several of the Rock of Love girls. Uh, who had never really done TV or music or any of that before, they got like legitimately, genuinely traumatized after the show was done taping because they felt like they were really psychologically exploited and taken advantage of. And then some of them thought that that there was a chance they were really going to have a relationship with Brett Michaels. And when they realized that that wasn't really going to happen, then they got like really depressed. And then watching themselves back on TV made them feel bad, which I totally get all of that. But, um, and like one of the girls I interviewed, Sam from Rock of Love season one was like, she's flat out said, I would not do that show again. If knowing what I know right now, I would not do it again because it was just miserable for me. I'm like, well, that, that sucks. But for me personally, I talked to you on the phone the other day, a little bit about this. And, you know, because I played this character, I felt like that was, um, it, it kept it fun. I felt like I was kind of like in performance mode all the time, you know? And I felt right. like for for you, well, at least from the viewer perspective, I felt like you kind of were this, uh, not that you weren't, not that you were playing a character, because I felt like you were that Goldie was Courtney, you know, but you just had this um, like, you know, water off a duck's back, kind of like nothing could rattle you. Nothing could like upset you or disturb you. And even, I gotta say, I had my moment where I got obliterated on national television. You had that as well, where you had a few too many drinks and then, and then, uh, you know, passed out on the couch. How did, were you like, damn it, why did I let myself do that on national TV? Or you're like, ah, fuck it, who who cares? It was a fucking night. We've all had that. Girl. So no, I'm gonna keep it real. Like I, I really felt horrible about throwing up national TV. <laughs> like, that was the only moment that I could say, like, I just didn't have control mm-hmm. over what was going on. And I didn't want that to be a part of my story. Right. And I thought that was gonna get me a at night. You know what I mean? I'm like, they, they, they definitely not going to keep me. I threw up on TV. Like, what? <laughs> and so, girl, I felt bad. Like, if you if you ever go back and watch the um my confessional right after that night, like the next day, I look so sad. Like, I'm so sad because I'm like, no, Aww. I didn't want to do that on TV. Aww. But, you know, it was what it was. We've hey. all been there. We have all been there. And yeah. I literally, at least you got yours over early in the season and you had the rest of the season to redeem yourself. Okay. I did mine at the end of my season. So I, <laughs> and I like full on fell off the bar. It was, I was a hot mess. And um, 
Oh, I had because like you, you already know, you know what I'm saying? Like what you, how you, how you need to drink to like maintain. Right. And I, I, you know, I need food, uh, a little water, something. Right. Yeah. And girl, they was not giving us nothing. They gave us like this little plate of hors d'oeuvres. And I was like, <laughs> what is this? What is this? <laughs> I need food out. And so they just kept giving us champagne. Yep. That's and what they do. But you got it in your hand. And you're gonna <laughs> drink. And before I knew it, I was gone, like <laughs> all the way live, gone. And, you know, it, it, girl, I tried to lay down. And I remember it was funny because I remember one of the uh, producers had came in the, in the living room and she was like, Goldie, you better get up because you're going to get eliminated if you don't get up. And I was like, huh, okay. <laughs> I, can't, I came too far to go home now. Well, let, me, let me fight. I got to fight. Like, wait, let me at him. <laughs> my stomach was like, uh uh-uh, uh, you better lay back there. Yeah, someone's <laughs> like, your brain's saying one thing and your stomach's saying another thing. I always say, I love the producers, like, on an individual level as people, I love them. But I also yeah. say that they were the biggest villains of the whole show. It was the producers. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, honey, because you already know they try to create this perfect storm. Yes. By- I mean, for us, so that we can give them like great TV. Yep. And but I did. I really did love them. I really, I'm actually working with one of the producers right now from Flavor of Love. Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah, we're working on a show. Oh, girl, definitely. That's exciting. Oh, I'm happy for you. Is that something you can talk about, or is that in the works and you reveal later? No, 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 no. They're, 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 we can't reveal right now, Lacey. We can't oh, you gotta call I'm me just- when you're ready to go. I want to let everybody know about it. I didn't just know I said it first right here, right awesome. here. <laughs> I'm so excited. And I know that the with the viewers of this podcast, they're going to be super stoked too because we all love you on TV. You were so much fun and so entertaining. So I'm super stoked for you. That's so exciting. Do you know when you think you'll be able to announce this like officially? Yeah, not yet because we're kind of in the intro stages, but you know, the, the, the pitch has happened. She loves it. Her agency loves it. Nice. So- just kind of looking for a network. Oh, that's so awesome, girl. That is so great. I. It's funny because, I mean, there's so many great characters from all of these of love shows that I just would love to see back yeah. on television again. And I always like, it would be really funny if they did like a Flavor of Love Girls versus Rock of Love Girls somehow, like maybe like mm-hmm. a I Love Money style thing or something. But um, yeah. But yeah. yeah you're right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Speaking of I Love Money, did you get asked to do I Love Money or is that something that you had any interest in doing? I would have done it because at that time I needed some money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> money, but they didn't, um, no, they didn't do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so I have a bunch of fan questions um, for you from uh, the Talk of Love Instagram page. Um, so, a fan named Ryan Wiley wants to know about you and Brooke and your friendship because you guys are pretty tight on the show. And mm-hmm. did you guys maintain a friendship? Are there any of the girls that you kept um, talking to after the show was done filming? So, yeah, I did. Um, me and Brooke, uh, like we used to hang out. Um, AKA she, Pumpkin. Yeah, Pumpkin, right, yeah. right. She, um, she lived like two hours away in California, so... Um, sometimes like we would meet up, I would go hang out with her, we would party. Um, yeah, because like we we definitely had a bond on the show. Unfortunately, I haven't talked to her in a long time. It's been a while. So yeah, because I like I said, I moved away and I just kind of lost connection with a lot of people. Um, the last person I saw in North Carolina was Bucky. Oh, okay. Who? Yeah. Um, I guess they- you know, yeah, she was in uh Shay. Yeah, shit. Yeah, she- I have to say, I freaking love that girl. So when I was, I did I Love Money season three, which is the one that did not air. And uh, on that season, in I had an alliance with Bucky, uh, a- uh, Shay, aka Bucky, and also Delicious. And those two girls, I fucking love them. They are just so cool and so much fun. I had a great time on the show with them. So um, yeah, I dig both those ladies. You you know what? I would love to reach out if I, I mean to find like delicious because she just got married. Yeah, she did. It's so exciting for her. And I'm so happy for her. So if she gets a chance to see this girl, congratulations, honey. I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Aww. So 
I mean, I, I I would like for something to happen so we all could kind of get back together again and we could just connect. But, you know, hey, I'm sure it'll happen. It's hard because everybody's got like careers going or families going or everybody's kind of spread out all over the country. So it is hard to keep in contact with everybody. And I will say that one of my favorite aspects of this podcast that was sort of like an unintended perk is that I've gotten the opportunity to either reconnect with old castmates I haven't talked to in forever or ones mm -hmm. I, I wasn't friends with on the show I've gotten to become friends with. Or um, the other perspective is that like with all you Flavor of Love girls, I wasn't on shows with you guys necessarily. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is like me being getting to be a fangirl, you know? So it's, just, it's really cool getting to connect on that level. Because I know everybody yeah. kind of spreads out and life happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love, like, I love connecting with all of y'all as well. Cause you know what I mean? We were, it just seemed like you were kind of so isolated when yeah. you were on the show. And you know what I mean? And then it's like you go to these different events and you're like, oh, oh hey, you're from such and such. Right. Oh. Right. Well, also yeah. being on the show of like the, the nature of the shows that you and I were on were competitive. So we weren't necessarily supposed to be friends or if you do make friendships you're still competing so that made for me that made it challenging it's like how do you be friends and compete you know some people can balance I feel like you balanced it pretty well I, you know I tried because you know what the thing is is that I was like I said I was there to have fun yeah I was trying to um, I necessarily want to be with Flavor Flay right Although I love him for real I ain't really want to be your like that, so right. <laughs> so it wasn't it would I wasn't gonna ever get catty or mean spirited about the situation. Now, girl, now let me let me hinge that on the fact okay. that I said if I was on um, the show with Ray J, yes, woo, woo. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I probably would have been in there fighting, girl, pulling hair, girl. <laughs> I mean, girl, dragging people because uh, Ray J is fine. Honey. He's a good looking man. He's a good looking man. I'll give you that. Yeah. And you know, they put me on the right show. <laughs> uh, so do you have do you, chill. So do you got, do you have a, um, a Mr. Goldie in your life right now or anybody that you're dating or got your eyes on? Well, now, now <laughs> I have friends. Let me put it that way. Okay. That's, hey, I that's a and but no I mean honestly like I'm really looking so I won't say looking but I'm waiting I'm waiting for God to bring the right man into my life because this it has been hard it's been challenging to date um because I have I have a LA mindset but I'm in North Carolina that makes and sense so you know what I mean it's like I don't think it's kind of it's kind of hard to connect with me in here Cause you know these are these are good old country boys, right. and you know they just want a woman that's gonna be in the kitchen right. cooking <laughs> and like chilling, cutting toenails. Like, <laughs> I mean, I can do all of that, but I also have like big plans and dreams for my life, and I've been places and done stuff. So it's like I kind of have to find somebody that can be there, yeah, for the, for the work. I think yeah. that is the best attitude to have. And I will say that I personally purposefully waited until I was in my 30s to like get settled down with a man and get married. You know, I had relationships along the way, but um, I was like, I'm just not going to be in a hurry. And my mindset was like, I will someday get married. And when it happens, it happens. And I'm not going to try to force it. I'm not going to be in a hurry for it to happen. And so- when I met my husband, I was 37 and I literally like was not looking. I had been out of a relationship for about a year and the last guy before him was a piece of shit. And so mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm just going to do me and not worry about finding a man. And then like, bam, it just happened. So like, I always tell women like, don't, the best thing you can do for yourself is don't be in a hurry. Don't look for it. Focus on you. And then when the time is right, it'll just happen. And, and it, without even any effort on your part. Right. And I always hear that. I always hear people say that. I mean, like when you're not looking and I'm like, well, if I could just quit looking, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, let me turn that off. Um, Cause I really desire to be, you know, in a relationship or whatever with somebody. I mean, you know, I'm one of these, I like to cuddle girl. I yeah. like to be, oh, okay. I like to cuddle. 
Yeah, so I'm one of them. And, uh, but you know what I mean? I definitely want to wait for the right person because I know how detrimental it can be with you the wrong person. Oh, yeah. It just like, yeah, it, like slamming a square peg into the round hole. <laughs> it does not work well with relationships. Trying to make it work. And it's so crazy because I think as women, we already know. You know, like in the pit of your stomach, when this is not it, he's not the one. Yep. But you're just like, no, but... I like the way he looks. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to try to make it. (laughs) We get attached. We get attached. And you know what's interesting? I read a study that was saying that the part of your brain that um, processes love is the same part of your brain that processes addiction. And I'm like, that really makes sense to me because that's why when you're with a guy that is like, this is the wrong guy, I'm just going to stop calling him. And then you're, you're laying there in the middle of night, you're looking at your phone like, okay, maybe just one text, just one text. I could quit anytime, just one text. <laughs> you're like, no, what am I doing? <laughs> it makes all sense in the world because I, like, like I, I, when I'm in something, I can find myself obsessing about yes. it. Yes, that's and, and so I definitely, that definitely makes sense. And it's also funny because like when I'm, when I'm talking to my clients and you know, some of them, a lot of my female clients are going through relationship drama and you know, I'll hear myself say amazing stuff to them. I, uh, I, I why, yeah. Like, why can't I apply that to my own self? It's always like, yeah, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so just like, just like ways of like building self esteem and just kind of detaching from toxic relationships. Just all kind of like it's good stuff. It's just like, uh, but Courtney, are you gonna do? It yeah. Well, it's hard because when you're giving that kind of advice to somebody else, then you're giving it from like an objective standpoint. Like you can, you're not emotionally attached to their situation, so you can, you know, talk to them in a way that is. Um, that is like very logical and, and, you know, a voice of reason. And as I said, you're being objective, but then when it's yourself, you're, it's like, you're too close to it and it's, you're too subjective about it. There's too much emotion tied in to be able to separate and just do it objectively. So it makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a, uh, I was talking to this guy who was super cute, super, super cute. And I'm, I mean, uh, girl. uh. So (laughs) anyway, he, um, he, like, we had like a disagreement and he texted me a uh, 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 middle finger, like F U emoji. Oh, geez. Wow. Mature. Like, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> going there. Okay. Oh, I, girl, I had to clutch my pearls. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. But then I found myself even like second guessing, like, well, maybe. <laughs> maybe he didn't mean it. Maybe he maybe. hit the wrong emoji. <laughs> it was- right. Maybe he meant to see, see the like thumbs up and he said the wrong. <laughs> yeah, he just sent the wrong finger. That's all. He meant he meant to see the ring finger. The, the yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. this is my justify in any What you become passionate about is what's personal to you the most. Yes. And and so feeling valuable and and put that as 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 like this is my like agenda. Like I have to I have to feel valuable. I have to know my worth. I have to know my value. And so this is what I mostly when I talk to women, um, this is what I really feel the most passionate about because it's it's been my personal struggle. I love that. That's so cool. I love hearing that. Well let's get back into the shows a little bit. I always, you know it's so funny, I always do these podcasts and I get talking to people and we get talking about like real life stuff. And was like, yeah. you forgot to ask about New York. You forgot to ask about Brett Michaels or you forgot. So I'm like, yeah. all right, guys, I'll I promise I'll get her back onto the like the show stuff. But I can talk about this kind of stuff forever. I just I love it. And people like hearing about your real life stuff too, but I gotta mm-hmm. like squeeze in some of the flavor of love and, and charm school <laughs> questions. So okay, okay. So this is actually this is one that a fan asked, but I genuinely want to know this too. So on Instagram, official Justin Joyner says, um, Goldie, what was your relationship with New York on the show? Uh, I know you helped her find guys for season two of her show and made me wonder if you guys are friends. Yeah. So, you know, I was such a big fan of New York, but I can, I can't imagine. I I met her a couple of times in passing. She was really sweet to me both times, but I can't imagine being on a show with her. Like she's hell on wheels, you know? And so what was your experience with her like on the show? Did you guys stay friends? And is that true? Did you help find guys for her show? Well, okay. So, uh, Ooh, multi, multi part question. Yes. yes. Um, me and New York were, I wouldn't say we were friends. I would say we were cool. You know okay. what I mean? We were like associates, casual. Gotcha. Um, liked her. I did. I, 
I turned and I used to like I remember when I was in the house, like we used to play hide and go seek and all kind of little crazy <laughs> stuff. So girl, I would like run through I would, like running through the house and then I would stop and be like, Hey, you wanna play? And then she was like, oh, No, Goldie, no. <laughs> But then she would always want me, like she would ask me to cook for her. And I would be like, girl, bye. Uh, what I look like, girl, this is not the help and I am not the maid. You know what I mean? So she was like, girl, you country. I know you can cook. And I was like, oh, girl, you not. And I'm sure you can too. So I know, love it. It's, uh, you know, but, but we were, we were very, we were very cordial on the show. We were, I, I definitely liked New York. And, but we didn't, we didn't like keep in touch after. Um, I would love to. Oh, I would love to talk to her and see. I don't feel that way about anybody, mm -hmm. but I do. I do feel that way about Tiffany because I think Tiffany was she was um, a go getter. Mm -hmm. She was definitely a business woman. She knew what she wanted out of the show. I, you know, what I mean, I was gonna have fun. I was gonna have fun. She kind of had that foresight to be like, "Oh, girl, this is really gonna be big for us." Um, cause I remember she was like, we were just standing in the, in the, um, that front room or whatever you call it. And, um, she was like, oh girl, our skin is going to look amazing on TV. And I was like, is it really? Oh, okay. So, you know, just stuff like that. Um, and, and, and on the, uh, the date with me and her, it was her and Flav. When we yeah. Went yeah. Yeah. She, um, it's, there was a, like, cause, cause they brought in like all dresses that we kind of pick and choose. And there was one dress on it, but she didn't get it. And I don't remember why. She just didn't grab it at the time. She was like, um, oh, my God, I wanted that gold dress so bad. I wanted that dress. So later on, I ended up you know, being cool with the girl that had the dresses. And I was like, oh, that one. Let me get that one for New York. Oh. Because like, she wanted it. And I wanted to make sure she got it. That was nice and of so, you. Yeah. And so when on uh, the night. I think it was the night I got eliminated. I put the dress on her bed because, girl, she was mad at me. Remember, she was pissed at me because I got the a long time with. Right. Yes. Yeah. So she wasn't even like that night. She was just like not talking to me, and I was like, "Girl, bye. how you not gonna talk to me? We like the only people in the house. Like, what you mean? Right. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. So I put the dress on her bed, and um, I know I could tell she appreciated it in her own little way. Of course, but, yeah. Yeah, um, I think there might have been a third part, but I don't remember the rest oh, of the question. Oh, um, did you help pick uh, guys on her show? So we did um, at one of the, the casting show for I Love New York, uh, which was a bomb experience. Yeah. Oh, God, it was so fun. Oh, nice. Oh, that's Girl, awesome. Because I, I was with the, the uh, producers, the director, and it was just me. So I got like all the perks. That's and, awesome. And we, yeah, we we traveled to a lot of different cities. I ended up on that. I ended up meeting um, Jennifer Hudson's husband or baby daddy. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember his name. His name. Um, y'all know, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Jennifer Hudson's baby daddy. There's gonna be like 50 comments with his name <laughs> right now. I can't think of his name right now either. Right, because I can't, I'm just it's just escaping me right now. But um, yeah, I mean, I remember meeting him because he was fine, and I was like, dang, nice. yeah, him, pick him. Um, and so we went to you know all around the country, and it was really, really that was that was really fun. That sounds and, amazing. That sounds like such a blast. Well, that's so cool. So then, what about your experience with uh Charm School? Because I know that you and like first Monique uh was invited you to come out and tour with her doing the stand up comedy, and then I guess there was like a little weirdness there. So let's get into all of that. I love the way you phrased it. A little weird. There's a little weirdness. A little something, something going on. Yeah. <laughs> to put it lightly. Well, I mean, you know. The whole, the, the, that whole thing was just so, like, like you said, weird. Mm -hmm. um, she did initially offer for me to go on the road with her, but then there wasn't really any follow-up to that. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of had like, um, time and I kind of had my manager reach out to her people and, you know, it was kind of like, well, we don't know, maybe. Did you get ghosted? Yeah. I, you know, no, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it was, but it, it was all good. Like, I, you know, I hadn't really been doing comedy that long at the time. So, you know, they may have just decided to go another way or whatever. 
And then um, I remember I was in Atlanta and I was at the like the Uptown Comedy Club. Yeah. And I kind of did a I did a joke about her. Me, me being petty. Me yeah. being petty, uh, petty. No, I get it. I get it. I don't blame but you. I, I'm woman enough to admit it. I was being petty. <laughs> so I took a little shot and uh, it got back to her and she called me on it. Really? Was, You're uh, king. Yeah. Um, I took that. My bad, you know what well, I'm saying? Well, um, I mean, I respect that you're owning up to it, but at the same time, if she's on the level of celebrityness that she's at, you got to expect that people are going to give you little jabs along the way. And she also knows that she didn't follow through on her promise to you. So she should be like not so thin skinned that she needs to call you up and be like, were you saying bad things about me? I mean, right. that's, that's, that's kind of silly. At the comedy club, girl. And I, I I felt overall, I felt horrible. I felt horrible because at the end of the day, you know what I mean? What she, she doesn't owe me anything. And that's, that's my stance on it. Too. She doesn't owe me anything. Ever did. I appreciate being on charm school, school but eh, you know, overall, I prefer flavor of love. There you go. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's cool. And also, I want to bring up, um, since then, you have been, you've been doing a lot because you did do some comedy stuff and you did, you know, the, the getting your master's and all that, but you've also got your SAG card and you did like a bunch of um, extras and roles and movies and TV. Like you were like, girl, you're kicking ass at life. So talk about that a little bit. Honey, I'm trying because like after Flavor of Love, I really wanted to get into acting. Well, before Flavor of Love, I really wanted to get into acting. And so, um, you know, of course, when you out there, you got to do the cattle call. Yep. You got to do the back and stuff like that just to kind of keep money coming um and then you get opportunities off of that so i was doing judge joe brown like all the time that was <laughs> yeah um, i love that you did judge joe brown because i always wanted to be in like television movies music too and when i was about 20 years old living in dallas texas i was on a court tv show called texas justice <laughs> and it was literally like a judge with like a cowboy hat, like galloping up on his horse with like his gavel. It was like so ridiculous. So I love that you did like a court TV show too. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so that, you know, that was kind of something. And then I I, um, I got my sad card um, doing Rush Hour 3. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so um, I didn't meet Jackie Chan. <laughs> I kind of sort of in passing met Chris Tucker He's amazing, though. He's so fun because, like, I remember in between takes, he used to do, like, Michael Jackson moves and stuff like that. You know, he loved Michael Jackson. So, That's awesome. Um, Who, how can you not? Girl, I, That's so awesome. I remember and that, was, that was real cool. And um, so just over, you know, over time, just kind of, you know, being on different stuff, you get to meet, you know, all of these, you know, people. And so that was really, that was really cool. I also was telling you I did uh, plays. Yeah, you do plays. Yeah, you said you did a play with uh, David Faustino, a.k.a. Uh, Bud Bundy from Married with Children. Is that right? Yep, thank you for the name. I, I, it popped oh, in my head after we talked. And I was like, I used to watch that show. But yeah, David Faustino. That's as easy to play with him. Yeah, I did. I did. I played his I played his love interest in the play, which was so cool. He was so nice. Um, Carl Payne from Martin. Oh, he brought me in on play. And so we um, we went out for a little bit. It wasn't that long, but we went out for a while. Just, I guess it was kind of like a test run. And uh, David was like, girl, we used to go hang out. We used to drink, go get food. That's blah, blah, blah. awesome. The only thing I didn't like about the play is I had to wear a fat suit. Oh. And, you know, as a woman, that's always like, I, I always kind of been like struggling with my weight. You know, and I'm like, oh, uh, y'all ain't gonna put me on this stage. You no know, fat. <laughs> that had they, been... They said the role was for a big girl. And they were like, I wasn't big enough to play the big girl. Oh, wow. So, so you had to wear a fat suit. That's crazy. I bet that was super uncomfortable. It was. It was weird for me. You know what I mean? And if I'm, if I'm weird, then I'm not. It's hard to be in the right. role. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, on, our, on the Rock of Love Girls Charm School with Sharon Osbourne, uh, Christy Joe had to wear a fat suit for one of our challenges. And so, and it was really funny though, cause she just like totally owned it, but it just completely transformed her. But she was like, yeah, it was like, I mean, she totally like did it to the fullest, like best that she, what? I mean, totally could. But it was like, yeah, it looked miserable though. 
but had it been like had it been where they did like the makeup like a like the clump like professor clump if they did like the whole like makeup and everything i probably could have got into the vibe of it better but it was just like i stepped into a fat suit like a halloween oh, that's so, crazy like, okay this is weird but <laughs> wait, wait. I did um I also did another play with Billy D. Williams, Leon, Shirley Murdoch, and that one was so fun. I, we wanted to roll for three months with that one. Oh, that's awesome. What was that one called? Shacking Up. Shacking Up. That's uh-huh. awesome. Yeah. yeah so girl and I um I w- as a matter of fact, it's funny because we did um we went around like everywhere. And one night in Detroit, um, the scene was I had to come through the door, like just rambling. And walked down some stairs, and I had a scene with Elise Neal. And so um, I'm talking, and I'm coming down the steps. But as I'm coming down the steps, I had stilettos. Oh, okay. And everybody know me, know I have the heels. <sighs> and the stiletto heel went into the cuff <gasps> of my pants. Oh, no. <laughs> Flipped and uh, flew through the air and landed on my back. Oh, no. <laughs> Like when I looked down, my ankle was twisted, and Ooh. I was just like, "Oh, oh my god!" You totally pulled like a Mary Catherine Gallagher from SNL, <laughs> like Girl, legs in the air. I tried, like, like I immediately went back into doing my lines, and Elise was just looking at me like, "Are you okay?" Oh and I wow! Was like, Girl, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and so she had to help me hop off the side of the stage because I was supposed to go back up the stairs. And um and then so I remember like because we were in Detroit and Delicious is from Detroit okay and the, the, the director was like he said um yeah you know Delicious people called and was like uh if Goldie can't do it we can just let Delicious come and do oh. it and I'm like oh, oh. <laughs> you're like no Goldie doing Goldie's doing this Goldie's doing oh, this Goldie's doing this and the show will go on uh <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so awesome. I love it, Courtney. I love it. So, girl, I am so sorry, but we are out of time, and I feel like we could talk for like six more hours, but you are so awesome. I'm so happy that you came on the podcast, and I'm going to have to have you come back, but before I let you go, is there anything that you would like to plug or that you'd like the fans to know, or how can they find you on social media? All that good stuff. Okay. Uh, Facebook is Courtney Jackson, just Courtney Jackson. Instagram, it is Goldie, G-O-L-D-I-E underscore 98. And I have a Instagram live show that I do every Wednesday night at yes. 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So y'all, please check me out. Tomorrow night, I'm interviewing Lunell. That's huge. Lunell, that's amazing. That Yeah, you've had some really cool guests on your thing that you do every Wednesday on uh, Instagram. That's awesome. That's exciting Thank- for you. I think I did Mr. Cheeks from Lost Boys, girl. So I was like, ah. nice. Oh, that's awesome. That's so yeah. rad. Y'all check that out. And um, just continue to follow me, man. I love you. Thank you. Thank all the fans. I appreciate y'all still like caring about your girl after all this time. So uh, yeah, man, you're just going to keep putting out content. That's it. I love it. And I'm so excited for your upcoming show, whatever you're doing, Courtney. I'm like, I wish you all the best. You're so, you're such a, like a good person, good energy. You're entertaining. You make us all laugh and you make us all smile. And I just got to say, I have mad respect for you and I wish you all the best. Too Lacey. Thank you, girl. I appreciate you bringing me on your show. Thanks. Absolutely. Have a good one. I'll talk to you again soon, I'm sure. Okay, babe. Bye, have a good girl. one. <laughs> Oh, that was so much fun. I love her. She is just absolutely amazing. And I am excited for the future of the podcast. I can't wait to bring on more guests from Flavor of Love, more guests from I Love New York, Daisy of Love. We've got like just an endless amount of awesome people to bring on to this podcast. So make sure that you subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube because we've got more and more and more endless amounts of cool people, amazing people to bring on. And I'm just like so excited for the future because that was really, really fun. And, you know, bringing on the Rock of Love girls is really fun. But at the same time, most of those girls are either like my acquaintances or friends. But I'm such a fan girl when it comes to Flavor of Love and and the shows that I wasn't on. So it's really fun for me to get to interview people like Courtney. She's just amazing. So anyway, um, thank you guys again. Make sure that if you want to be a contributor to the podcast, uh, I definitely love 
to have you guys support. It really, really helps me out. It really, really helps out the podcast. Plus you get really great rewards. So if you want to become a contributor and receive rewards, all you have to do is go to the Talk of Love website, which is www dot talkoflove.net. Once you're there, just click on the contribute button and you can sign up for things like Skype chats with me, which I do every month with my contributors. Uh, you can also sign up to get personalized shout out videos. Oh, and I'm still doing the Rock of Love watch along videos, or you would also call them reaction videos. I'm on episode seven of Rock of Love. So I've done the first seven episodes, reaction videos, and those are just a lot of fun. So be sure to check out the uh, contribute button on the talkoflove.net website so you can sign up for some rewards for yourself and simultaneously help contribute to the podcast. Uh, make sure, as I said, hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Make sure to hit that thumbs up. And um, I also want to give a shout out to Liquid Death, which is really, really great, yummy, delicious mountain water in a kick-ass can. And you will not be contributing to plastic in the ocean or plastic in the environment with Liquid Death. So be sure to go to their website. I'm going to put all of that in the description on YouTube. So be sure to click on the description to check that out. I also want to give a shout out to the podcast Starry Network. You guys are awesome. Go check them out as well. I've got a link below. Check out their Patreon. They're a really great podcast where they really embrace and, um, and promote artists. They are all about poetry and literature and philosophy and music and film, and they are all about inclusivity. So I totally appreciate them, respect them, and they've got all kinds of cool stuff going on over there. So be sure to check out Starry Network. Again, I have all of their information, including their Patreon in the description below. So Anyway, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Talk of Love. And I will see you guys next Monday. And don't thun me with a good time. Bye, guys. The Talk of Love podcast is sponsored by Liquid Death. Murder your thirst. Liquid Death is 100% mountain water from the Alps. There is no plastic. It's mountain water out of an aluminum can. So you'll be doing right by the environment and you'll be doing right by your body. If you want your 10% off, be sure to go to liquiddeath.com. Type in the promo code TALKOFLOVE. No spaces. Next time you're thirsty, murder your thirst. Pick up a can of Liquid Death today.